Me and a couple other guys crawling around on the floor, growling at each other. That was weird, I'll never forget that. Are you curious about how all the effects were done in Wednesday? Well, we've got some secrets to spill about Thing, Nevermore Academy, and all of the featured creatures. Hello, Thing. Number one, everyone's favorite hand is actually attached to a full-grown man. The extremely discreet and talented Victor Dorabantu wears a full-bodied blue suit to create the effect of the amputated hand. His scenes involved him twisting and contorting into hard-to-reach places, oftentimes crawling on the ground and hiding behind Jenna Ortega. Sometimes he would have the luxury of getting wheeled alongside her on a camera dolly. Check out the way this underwater scene was filmed. Fun fact, Victor Dorabantu and Chris Christopher Hart, the actor who played Thing in the 90s, are both magicians. Apparently, it was very important for the character of Thing to have dexterity, which was one of the main reasons Victor was cast. Surrender. Number two. Remember when she dropped piranhas in the pool? Yeah, they had to do a little bit of special effects on the roof of the school to make it a little less normy. The school is called Polytechnica University of Bucharest, and it was founded in 1818. The swimming pool, though, is filmed at a sports park in a completely different location in Bucharest. I'm not sure whose twisted idea it was to put hundreds of adolescents in underfunded schools. <laughs> Number three, this would be the monster that Wednesday is desperate to find the identity of. The hide was crafted completely with CGI to achieve that bulging-eyed, razor-sharp tooth and massive hulking monster antagonist created by Tim Burton. He was based on a drawing that Tim Burton designed before shooting even started. He brought a few drawings to the writer's room and the writers all enthusiastically agreed on the hide drawing. What really went on behind the scenes while shooting was a lot different than what we saw on screen. The hide consisted of a man in a full-bodied black suit with tracking marks all over it, propped up on stilts with crutches attached to his arms to portray the massive size of the monster in real time. Seeing the much less frightening costume that Jenna Ortega really had to react to, we're even more impressed by her performance. Number four. Obviously, Oliver Watson isn't a real merman, but he's an excellent swimmer. What really went down in this scene was half practical and half special effects. Oliver Watson really did swim underwater, but instead of a full-length mermaid tail, he just had on a regular flipper to assist him in the water. As you can see from that behind-the-scenes clip, he's extremely comfortable in the water and was definitely the right choice to accomplice Bianca in her poke up scheme. You can even see his mermaid contacts as he does a short video with the cast. Thing. Number 5. Also known as Canta Cusino Castle, this stunning Romanian castle got a spooky makeover to play the role of Nevermore Academy. The castle is actually pretty inviting when looking at the exteriors and the bright red roof, but the creators of the show thought the roof didn't quite match that kooky Adams Family vibe, so they built on top of it with special effects. You will love Nevermore. Won't you, Tish? Of course you will. Number six. Remember that time Wednesday was almost ended like 10 minutes after she stepped on campus? Though the scene was definitely a lot safer behind the scenes, it really wasn't all that safe. Jenna Ortega's stunt double, Jenny Ayumi, was really under the gargoyle, and it really did crash down, but with little intermission in between. The gargoyle drops down attached to a wire. The stunt takes place when she is shoved out of the way. Oh, that was close. Number seven, Rowan was definitely binging Stranger Things before this. In the scene where he slams Wednesday up against a tree, he gets help from a few wires behind the scenes. And luckily, Jenna Ortega gets a nice mat to soften the impact. They practiced this stunt with her stunt double beforehand to make sure it was safe enough for her to perform. I give stunt coordinators such immense anxiety. Jenna was extremely adamant about doing as many stunts as she could. I will throw myself on the floor, off a wall. Number eight. Though you'd think after two hits were taken on Wednesday's life, she'd want an hour or two of therapy, but clearly she has better things to do. Jenny Ayumi fearlessly hops down from the rooftop and makes sliding down the side of a building on a wire look easier than it possibly ever should. Number nine. No wires, just talent. The intense fencing battle between Wednesday and Bianca was a stellar introduction to their complex friendship. You must be the self-appointed Queen Bee. Interesting thing about bees, pull out their stingers and they drop dead. Okay, the word friendship might be an overstatement, but regardless, we get an incredible stunt sequence out of this classmate conflict. 
Your face finally got that splash of color it's so desperately needed. Number 10. Some of it was at a lake, and some of it wasn't. The Po Cup was filmed across two lakes in Romania, but there was also a set built at Buftea Studios. There were even some pretty hilarious mishaps that happened while shooting, causing the entire cast to need a major wardrobe change. This is what could have happened if Thing hadn't saved the day by decking Kent in the face. I want to welcome you all to the Edgar Allan Poe Cup. Number 11. We're talking about werewolves, of course. When Enid gets a visit from her parents, she stares in envy at the pack she so desperately wants to be part of. We can't really blame her, though. These guys can actually catch frisbees in their mouths. That's pretty impressive. The only thing they really needed assistance with was getting high enough in the air. Nothing a simple trampoline can't fix. Otherwise, a completely practical stunt. Number 12. The quad goes up in flames in the finale. Crackstone wasted no time after being resurrected from the grave. I will expunge you abominations from this ah! In the show, the fire starts off from this massive explosion, courtesy of Crackstone's magic, but behind the scenes, it's much calmer. It's clear that the production crew wanted a safe, explosionless set, so CGI definitely came in handy for that. We also get to see Bianca's incredible wire stunt where she stands up to Crackstone. Talk about a character. Arc. Number 13. Poor Mayor Noble Walker. The mayor ends up getting hit by a car, sending Wednesday's investigation in a whole new direction. In the show, you can't even tell that this was a professionally performed stunt. It looks like he actually gets hit. But if you watch the behind-the-scenes footage close enough, you can fully see the little jump onto the hood of the car, causing for a safe performance. Who did you think it was behind the wheel when you saw the first episode? Blue Cadillac with no license plates. Yeah, I know. Number 14. You'd be surprised how minimal the CGI was to build the town of Jericho. Just little enhancements here and there to breathe more life into the town. It was impressively built from scratch at the famous Buftea Studios, Eastern Europe's largest film studio. It was supposed to look like a typical New England town. You can see they didn't spare any details, really honing on the church steeple as it plays a huge role in the big explosion scene. All of the other stores and shops, the florist shop, cobbler shop, and thrift store, were actually facades based on Charles Adams. Adam's original illustrations. Number 15. Don't worry, we're pretty sure they had faces behind the scenes. These faceless characters definitely add a touch of Nevermore spookiness that's so subtle, they're almost easy to miss. The way they achieved this faceless look was by using a planner tracker to track the actors' faces and facial movements. They then used editing software to remove their eyes and mouths, isolating those images and placing them onto the facial data saved for the planner tracker. And what did you think about Wednesday CGI and special effects? It's pretty incredible how many things were completely practical, from the sword fights, the major stunts, the Poe Cup, and of course, Thing. What part of the movie magic was your favorite?